about you and it's about you and your talent, your gift from God. So you have to use it to the best of your ability. So we are giving you the opportunity to send in your videos of your singing, dancing, poetry, playing an instrument at youthvibes473 at gmail.com. Youth Vibes, Youth V Y B E 473 at gmail.com. Get it right, because you don't want to miss the opportunity to be on TV. I said on TV, GIS channel 12 or 22 at your home, so make your mom see it. Woo. We're gonna be nice. This is your host, Lil Vaughn. I get me clothes and I'm ready for the road. Youth vibes turn up, turn up. I get me clothes and I'm ready for the road. Cause youth vibes turn up, turn up. Boom. Spice Morning for today, Wednesday, the 27th day of November. Well, the countdown, I mean, on Saturday, and that's bye-bye to November. After that, we're heading into December, and the countdown to Christmas begins. Anyway, this morning, we have Archdeacon Christian Glasgow with us, and he is going to be conducting our devotional segment this morning. Good morning. How are you, Archdeacon? Morning, Janice. I'm doing well, thanks. And you? I am fabulous. I slept well these days. It's nice and cool, a little shower here, and whenever that is happening, I'm on top of my game. <laughs> I can see that in your face. All right. So <laughs> did you come all the way from St. Andrews this morning? No, no, no. Fortunately, St. George's. I'm based in St. George's now. Okay, so, you're based in St. George's. Yes. Yeah, so just, just a hop and a drop. A hop across. and a drop, and you're here. <laughs> yeah. Well, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. Let me just say also good morning to all the viewers and to say thanks for having me on the program and having me in your home this morning as we share in this devotion. Let us begin with a word of prayer. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, our Father, you have been a light to shine out of darkness and have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives being open to your glory, we may shine as lights in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Our scripture reading this morning, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I'm going to use a passage from St. Luke, mm -hmm. St. Luke chapter 20, verses 35 to 43. And uh, some folks might recognize this as the gospel used at last Sunday worship. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at Jesus, saying, He save others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him that read, This is the of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been con condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I today you will be with me in paradise. The word of the Lord. Thanks Amen. be to God. Early in the Gospel of St. Luke, some in chapter 16, Jesus poses the question to his disciples, But who do you say that I am? It is a question that requires a very personal response. It's not a question that simply seeks to identify Jesus and to set out his identity. But more, it's a question that seeks to draw from the individual person what is their understanding of Jesus and what relationship 
they have relative to Jesus. The Gospel reading that I read this morning gives us an example of four responses to that question. First response comes from Pilate, who sat in judgment over Jesus and who condemned him to die and placed on the cross the inscription, the King of the Jews. So this first response from Pilate acknowledges Jesus as a king, king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. But it is a response of condemnation. For Pilate acknowledges him as king of Jews, king of the Jews, and allows him to live. It means therefore that Pilate's way of living has to change. And Pilate is quite comfortable being governor there. He's comfortable with his lifestyle. And he really doesn't want the intrusion of Jesus in his life at this stage. So that's, a, that's one of the responses many people gave to Jesus. Yes, Jesus is a good man, he's the king of the Jews, but I don't quite ready to have him interfere in my life as yet. Sure. I'm enjoying life as it is. I like what I'm doing. I'm having fun. So Jesus, you stay there for a while. I don't think I want you here in my life as it. For it calls for a change of attitude, a change of lifestyle, giving up some things that we may have become very comfortable with. So that's one, one response, one of condemning Jesus to be out of our life. The second response comes from the religious leaders of the day there. We notice them scoffing at Jesus and heckling him. And it's a response really that totally denies Jesus as being a Messiah. A response that really says, we don't believe you are God's son. And that's a response we find among our people today. There are many people who will say to you, look, there is no God. And uh, this Jesus thing really is nonsense. And they will live their lives without any God reference. And um, we see that over and over in our communities. There are those who will live as if they're Lord unto themselves. They take no regard whatsoever for any other one. And they literally live daily as if after this, that's it. Then the, the third response from one of the criminals on the cross. And it is a response of an accusation, an accusation that seeks to place Jesus as a imposter. Notice, he claims, if you are the son of God, if you're the Messiah, well, save yourself and save us. In other words, you, you claim to be all of this. But here it is, you are hanging with us and you're dying with us. Now do some really are the son of God. And you know, that is a response that many persons who claim to love and serve God give to Jesus in their lives. Have you ever come across people who are very good as quote-unquote Christians and they're good at giving advice to others as to how to deal with, with troubles? But when trouble comes their way, they have a very great difficulty trying to even assimilate the very, the very advice they would have given to others so as to take them through the time of trouble. And you sometimes hear them say, but, but I've been so good to God, why is this happening to me? I just can't understand this. This can't be right. That type of accusation that says, well, Jesus, <laughs> You've got to do something good for me. Not recognizing that, you know, in all things, in our experiences in life, we must come to the point where we accept and understand that God is always in charge. And God is working his purpose out, regardless to what the situation is. One of the things I've come to understand and to accept in life is that whatever God allows, he allows it for a particular reason. And sometimes it may be difficult, but very often it is good for our discipline that we, are, that we grow through it, that we are shaped through it, and that we are brought to perfection through it. So that's, that's, that's the, the third response. The fourth response comes from the other, other um, criminal, 
and his response is this it is one of acknowledging the kingship of Jesus Christ and also acknowledging that relative to Jesus he must be subjected notice his response is when you come in your kingdom remember me he immediately acknowledges that Jesus is the Christ Jesus is the king and that Jesus is the one through whom salvation can be had it is interesting to note that this fourth response acknowledges the time of suffering as being a just one that he deserves he acknowledges that his present situation is not going to be permanent either for a look he looks to the future when you come in your kingdom and I think out of this there are some lessons that we can draw on for our daily existence you know we here are preparing ourselves in Grenada for a, a difficult time ahead one of sacrifice right across the nation and I think that this is a response that we will find useful a response that says to us that we must go through this time of fire but it is not and that too will pass we therefore need to look to the future and to prepare for that it is not to deny what the present present is but it is simply to acknowledge that the present is not the end all of all things but rather it is a phase that we are passing through and it will come to an end all right well um minister archdeacon glasgow I just want to thank you so much for sharing this morning. It is uh, indeed a profound um, part of the scripture. And um, I like what you shared with us about the various responses. Persons, you know, totally denying God and uh, or Jesus and referring to him as an imposter. <laughs> you have persons um, live their life with absolutely no reference to God, as if God doesn't exist, period. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who are just not, not ready yet. You know, I am not ready to make changes or sacrifices or alterations to my life. And then, of course, there was the fourth response of that thief on the cross acknowledging that he deserved whatever punishment he was getting. But again, then again, just accepting Jesus and saying, you know what, when your kingdom come, I want to be a part of that kingdom. So thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. Folks, I was just speaking there with um, Archdeacon Christian Glasgow, and I, you have heard the various responses, and I hope that response this morning will be one of acknowledging Jesus Christ and wanting to be a part of that kingdom when it comes. Thank you again for spending time with us for the devotional moments. I invite you to continue to stay with us on Spice Morning. Let's take a break, and we'll be right back. If you spend two hours in a room where someone's smoking, you'll inhale the equivalent of four cigarettes. My dad shared an office with a chain smoker, eight hours a day, five days a week, for more than 10 years. Not surprisingly, he died of lung cancer. I've had enough of secondhand smoke. Have you? Okay, sonny, why? Then he going to say let people pass. You got to wake up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Oh, God. Mommy, do you want to cross the street? Yes, do, do. But are they here? Oh, gosh, afraid to freak out and then bounce me. Sir, so, can you come and ask if he's all ready to cross the street, please? All right, no problem. All right, you want to cross? Yes, yes. Some help. All right. All right then, go cross. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dudu. Oh gosh, 
Thank God for the little child. Oh gosh. Thank God for that little child and the police. Otherwise, I'd be standing up there for the whole morning. Thank you, Dudu. Policing our nation. The Royal Grenada Police Force protecting our children, serving our elders. Partnership for life.